All right, well, I'm back in the garage. The um, bug, the uh, slight problem I had with the remotes last time actually is a bug, I found out. And uh, the remotes are starting to drop like flies now, so I'm gonna flip it on here and show you what's, what's going on. <clears throat> so once this guy's all powered up and on, You'll see now it says 62.6 .6 volts for the pack, which obviously is not right, but you can see some of the cell voltages will come back as zero. Yes, yeah, so there's quite a few now. Yeah, so there's quite a few. There's one, two, three, nine was zero. Uh, 16 there is zero. So yeah, they're really starting to run into some issues. And I looked at the code the other day, uh, well just yesterday actually, and uh, I figured out the problem. It's, it's really simple and kind of silly actually. So there's, a, um, there's a timer on each one of those remotes. And approximately every 12 hours it cycles. So it starts at um, a very high value and then it slowly counts down. And uh, once it gets to the bottom, it uh, resets, it goes back up to the top and then starts counting down again. So what's happening is that um, just as it gets to the bottom, some variables are being updated with that value, with the timer value. And then uh, the timer goes to the very top so that uh, um, the condition, whatever condition the remotes are waiting for, uh, won't happen again until about tw until 12 hours later. So that's what the problem is. and. Um, it only happens occasionally because right at the bottom there, um, only if the uh, variable is updated at a specific time will the bug happen. So that, that's why uh, only some of the remotes are affected and, and eventually they'll all be affected but it'll take a very long time because that timer only goes around uh, once every 12 hours. So yeah, I, I just uh, made a simple, really simple fix for that. It's just a simple if statement is all I needed to add in there so it won't happen again and so now I gotta just reprogram all those remotes again and the, I guess the one problem with that is that um, since they're all heat shrunk in that clear heat shrink um, I'm gonna need to poke a few holes or cut a little opening to uh, get to the programming um, pads again but uh, so hopefully I'll be able to cut that open and program it and then tape them back in place and if that doesn't work out then I'll have to um, I'm out of heat, the clear heat shrink, so I'm gonna have to buy some more clear heat shrink and then uh, reheat shrink them. So those two remotes there are working. So the ones that do uh, have the bug or or are currently locked up, uh, you'll see that the green light won't be flashing on them. So uh, yeah, I might find one of those later. But uh, yeah, that's that's what the problem is. So I'm gonna. I'm going to be uh, focusing on fixing that. Okay, so here's remote number one off the bike. Um, so if you can remember, those uh, four little pads there, those are the programming pads. So I somehow have to either cut a little swatch there or uh, cut four little holes for the pins to get through. So this uh, might be a bit challenging, but I'm going to give it a go. All right, well, I just managed to cut a little uh, swatch in the uh, heat shrink and I was able to get my uh, my programmer pins uh, through there so yeah it all worked out in the end and uh, yeah it doesn't take too much time so uh, multiply that by 24 and it's not too bad so yeah I'm just gonna cut a little swatch in it and then I'll just put a another piece of uh, double-sided tape over top of that and it should be all good to go so yeah everything's all good all right. Well, I reprogrammed all those remotes. Uh, I ended up just mostly uh, on most of them. I ended up just cutting a little sw uh, square swatch out of the out of the clear heat shrink, and that did the trick. I just uh, reprogrammed reprogrammed them and then uh, connected them back up. And uh, she's fired up here, and you know, of course, everything's back to normal for now. But uh, yeah, it'll take a couple days to uh, know for sure if the fix worked. But I'm sure it did because I tested it on my desk and uh, everything seemed, seemed to be good and I replicated the problem as well on my desk so I'm pretty sure I got it fixed so yeah they should be all good now 
Um, so I got the charger set up here I want to show you. So these are six lead acid battery chargers from uh, the old bike. And here I just have them connected in series, so uh, it should be able to charge up to uh, 80, 85 or so volt pack. And uh, yeah, so I got the, uh, the main cord here, which is actually just the, the actual charging lead. And then I have the um, BMS connection here that controls the relay inside that power bar there. So I figured I'd uh, give this a go. I haven't really tested any of the features on the main board yet, so I'd figure I um, might as well test this as a start to see how she works. So, because I uh, haven't tested any of this stuff yet, so I'm just gonna hook this stuff up and let's see uh, let's see how it works here. So with the chargers here, um, I just used another one of these 100 ohm resistors I had laying around. And that actually serves as a pre-charge resistor, so when you plug in this, uh, you know, it avoids any big spark or anything when you plug it in, because uh, it'll just charge up the chargers through this 100 ohm resistor. Then afterwards you can just short it out by uh, connecting these two leads up, so uh, yeah, it's, it's just like, a, so you don't get a big spark when you plug it in, because uh, I don't like big sparks, so <laughs> big sparks are never good. So I'm going to plug her in here. Take off this tape just as an extra precaution for now. Plug this guy in. There we go. This guy's plugged in. And I'll plug in this guy. And if I got everything correct here, this uh, shouldn't turn on yet because the charge switch is not on. So hopefully I got this. Uh, correct here. So I'm just plugging this guy in here. Yeah, good. Good to go. Okay, chargers are not on yet, which is good. I'm just going to quickly hook up this, uh, this shorting link here, so just give me a sec. There we go. Just hooked up. And now all I have to do is um, Click this charge switch, and chargers are on. And let's see what's happening. So current meter reads plus six, which is obviously not perfect. It should be plus three, but you know it's not uh, perfect. And voltages are coming up, so it's all good. Nice. Oh, I hear a clicking noise. Yeah, I thought this might happen. So what's happening here is the um, the battery chargers are kind of having some issues, I think, because uh, they're probably at a certain voltage right now where they're kind of in between their bulk phase and their float phase, because of course these are for lead acid batteries. So uh, yeah, they're kind of pulsing there which uh, it's not ideal, but uh, it still charges up the pack, so <laughs> if the pack was lower than it is now, I'm pretty sure they, they would just stay on constantly, so. But there you have it, that's the uh, charger's given her. And so to test this out, uh, why don't I set, I'm gonna set one of these, the upper voltage cut off to like 3.32 or something. And so it will happen really quick. And we'll see what happens. Upper volt limb. Okay, this is going to take a while to change, so I'll get back to you when I change it. Oh, just an, another quick thing I'd like to mention. Um, I just got this thermometer here because uh, uh, they say you shouldn't charge uh, these lithium ion phosphate batteries when it's below zero degrees Celsius. So I figure I'll just make sure it's at least plus five whenever I charge up these batteries. So. Right now it's almost plus 10 in here, so definitely in the clear. I think the main thing that happens is that uh, if you try to charge the batteries when it's below zero, uh, I think uh, if I, my memory serves correctly, the uh, lithium uh, ions in the battery end up just uh, plating one of the uh, electrodes, so it, that's no good. So you just end up uh, ruining 
the battery. You don't end up reversing the chemical reaction, you just end up plating one of the electrodes. So, so yeah, make sure it's above zero when you're charging these batteries and uh, you should be good. All right, so the over voltage limit uh, definitely worked. It, it tripped out the chargers. So that's uh, exactly what I wanted. But um, the thing is that as soon as the voltage came down a little bit on the cells, it uh, turned the chargers back on. So I think I'm just gonna go and uh, make a small code change and make it so that the charger stays off once it hits that maximum level. Cause I really don't want it to, to hold it there. I want it to just shut off and be done with it. So. Uh, yeah, minor code change there that I'm going to make, uh, and I'll get back to you when I do that. Alright, so I thought I'd just show you what the bike looks like when it's charging. So uh, here's the BMS on, and everything's running. And so um, I have the balance voltage set at 3.33 volts, and I have the upper voltage cutoff set at 3.34 volts. So it uh, shouldn't take too long for these chargers to start uh, tripping the BMS or the, uh, the balancers to start coming on. So I'm just going to flip on the chargers here. Chargers are on. So they're going. And let's see what's happening here. we got 79.8 volts. 3.33, so we should see some regulators on now. Yeah, I see one down there. Occasionally. Yeah, a couple of them are regulating a little bit. I think it's just getting to 3.33, so. And now that the charges are kind of cutting in and out too, it's gonna it's gonna depend on uh, precisely when the remotes take a measurement. If they take a measurement when the charges are actually charging, then the uh, voltage will appear a little bit higher. So yeah, we definitely got some regulation action going on. So another 0 0.01 volts and the BMS should cut off the charger. Oh, and there we go. The uh, BMS just shut down the chargers, so we hit, uh, actually uh, I think I miss said that, it was, had it set for 3.35, so yeah, the voltage is already coming down, all the way down to 3.33, 3.32, so yeah, there you have it, the BMS uh, works really good, and you know, in order to reset that and get the chargers going again, all you have to do is flick that off and then flick it back on, and there you go, chargers are back on. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to shut that off. And yeah, that's uh, pretty much all she wrote. Um, I think I'm going to make one more change to the code in this guy. Because um, I tested out the low voltage warning. And uh, it works good, but it just it's not on the display for a long enough time. So I'm just going to put a little del delay in there and that should be good. And uh, beyond that, I think... Uh, Software-wise and electrical-wise, this bike is basically set to go. Uh, there's nothing really else to do to get it running uh, electrical-wise, so I think she's good. All right, another thing I wanted to test out was the balance voltage uh, programmability, make sure everything still works there. So um, I'm going to set this thing to 3.27 which should turn on all the uh, all the MOSFETs and all the all the balancing circuitry so let's see uh, what happens here yeah there we go so all the red lights mean that uh, they're currently discharging the batteries so let's make sure they're all on here they should be all on those ones are all good let's check the other side Yeah, looks like everything's good. Everything's on. Yep, every single one's on, so there we go. So now I'm just gonna, so each one of those are drawing half an amp right now. So I'm just gonna reset that back up to something reasonable to shut them off and I'll make sure they all turn off again.
Let's go to 3.35. That should work out. Okay, programming. So, yeah, green lights and then they shut off. Perfect. So yeah, all those things work. There we go, perfect. All right. So, and now to test the uh, lower voltage limit, that's gonna be a bit more challenging. I'm probably gonna actually have to uh, set that and then um, uh, maybe just turn the motor on and uh, just see what happens. So, yeah.